So the previous three videos I had all the hardware mounted on this board just to test it and find out how the B-Rotor worked. But now that I've found all that out, this is the setup I've got. So I've now connected up the video wires from the B-Rotor right here on this plug and that just goes over here to my video transmitter and my camera for the video in and out. And then the grounds I hooked up to. And in addition to that, I also added an LC filter right here. And this is from Ready-Made RC. Uh, thanks to Uncle Deke for making a video on that. But this really cleaned up the video be before my OSD was flickering and the video had lines going through. This totally cleared it up. So that's just going in the, in the voltage line that goes to my video transmitter and my camera. It does not go to the uh, B-Rotor. But that's all we got so far. Uh, I think it's pretty much done. And this is a knockoff of a 3DR power module that uh, I got from Multi-Rotor Mania. Now this is uh, going to weigh a little more probably because of this LC filter. So let's take a look at the weight. So the plane now weighs all up weight with the battery. 240 grams. Now you may have noticed the B-Rotor is an odd orientation here with it turned 90 degrees and then also flipped downward with the arrow going down. So what we're going to have to do is go into clean flight and do some configuration so that the uh, controller knows that this is the flat and level position for it. So right now the uh, plane is in a strange configuration as far as the B-Rotor board is on its side and turned 90 degrees. So we have a funny situation here in the setup. So what we have to do is go to the configuration tab. This is in clean flight by the way. Now we're going to go to the configuration tab right here and then just scroll down and right here we're going to change what we have. We're going to, since it's rolled to the right uh, 90 degrees, we're going to have to compensate it. So we compensate with minus 90. And then since it's pitched backward 90 degrees, we have to compensate with minus 90 there. So that's what we do. We enter that and then save the changes down here. Okay, now let's see what we got in the setup tab. We can go ahead and see how the plane acts. And here's our picture of the plane. So now when I tilt the plane to the right, it goes to the right, we got left, tilt it forward, tilt it back, so everything's working fine even though the controller is situated in a strange position inside the plane. So that's right side up and level right there. Now if your plane is is all level and it still looks kind of funny, sometimes you can just hit reset Z axis and that'll bring it back to the front like that. It doesn't have a magnetometer on this board, so there is no compass or anything. So it's, it's strictly just doing it this way with your accelerometers, gyros. It doesn't have a compass position until you plug on a GPS compass module. The next thing we have to do is to get rid of any slight discrepancy in the orientation of the B-Rotor board you can go to calibrate accelerometers. So just click on this button and you'll see up top here when it's calibrating you'll see the status. So I'll click on calibrate accelerometers. The plane's nice and level right now and it says finished so that should put it in a level orientation so that the B rotor controller knows the plane is level. And if any time you find that your CG has changed or your plane's level has changed, just go back in and calibrate the accelerometers again and that'll take care of the problem. So we're not going to calibrate the magnetometer because as I said this board does not have a magnetometer. That comes into play when you add a GPS compass module which has a magnetometer built in. So there's no magnetometer on the B-Rotor board itself. So basically that's all you have to do as far as this calibration. Okay, so the next thing I had trouble with is I wasn't getting enough deflection on my control surfaces and the stabilization was working backward in its effect. So what I had to do was go to the servos right here and change some things here. 
Now I poked around on here and ended up checking these two boxes and that got and that activated these two channels here which were my uh, aileron and elevator and that got enough deflection on those so the deflection is actually right here the min max that's your like your travel or your deflection so once I activated the channels these deflections came into play and then I got plenty of deflection when I moved my radio sticks and the other thing was that the stabilization was applied backwards so instead of helping it was actually hurting me for stabilizing the plane in acro mode so what I found out is you can come over here and I changed these two from a hundred percent the rate from a hundred percent to minus a hundred on both channels so I set those to minus a hundred and that reversed the direction of my stabilization correction you know so the stabilization corrects the flight of the plane and it was correcting it backwards so this reversed that so that my stabilization also worked and uh, so the, the theory behind this, as far as I know, and you can correct me if I'm wrong, because this is new to me too, but the theory about this is that these channels up here are actually coming from the channel map, and these over here are the outputs to the servos. So if I was to go back to my receiver, here's the channel map. This is how, what my radio map is right here and that's the JR map so my radio is set up like this and I pick that map and then it maps it to this right here so my first channel is going to be the roll which is my aileron and the second channel is going to be my pitch which is the elevator so channel channel one and two so then if I go back over to the servos channel one and two were right here and so that's where the uh, where it's inputting from the map into here and then I pick the column which goes to the wires over here where I have it soldered on. Now on the board the output channels are wired you know the picture is one, two, three, so forth on the board if you look at the board diagram but in here it's zero, one, two, three so they're offset because they're using zero to start with here but they're using one on the diagram in the board so that's a little confusing but anyway I had it soldered on these two pads which would be three and four because on the board I think they have two pads for the throttles so like the throttle for two motors like one and two or is the for the motor and then uh, and then it goes from there to two which would actually be this one and it's confusing but if you look at the board diagram just remember this is a one on the bo board diagram and not a zero but anyway, these are where my wires are soldered on, on the outputs on the B rotor. So then I just come over and put channel 1 on this one, and channel 2 on that one, and that's how I ended up with what I have. But I basically just had to poke around checking different boxes until the servos started to move, and then I knew what I had, because it is a little bit confusing. And then I just saved the configuration, of course, after I changed that stuff. So we're staying still under the weight limit. Now if anyone knows a really light GPS I can use uh, for this project, that would be great. Uh, so far I haven't found one light enough. This is too heavy. So if you know the, the GPS that will work with the B rotor that's light, I'm looking, I'd am looking. i like to see something around 10 grams or something like that if it's possible. But they always have these ceramic antennas on them, these ceramic patch antennas and they just weigh a lot. Yeah, this one's bad. If anyone knows one that's light and will work with the B rotor light controller, let me know. Here, play.